They can shake their fists and wag their fingers at me. They can get red in the face and glare at me from over their masks. It matters little to me. I do not hate them. I thank them for what they have done to me. It has helped me find a sense of purpose that I never knew before. That I, as a member of the Canadian Armed Forces, will give up everything up to including my health and my life for my brothers and sisters in arms, for the weak working people of this country. I see truth that is censored, twisted, and misrepresented. I see justice smothered by layer upon layer of bureaucracy and incomprehensible legal language. I see a segment of the population that is afraid of its own government. I see Canadian citizens moving or preparing to move to leave the country or move to remote areas so that they can live free and unobstructed lives. To say that I will not stand for this is inaccurate. The fact is I will stand against it with everything, with every fiber of my being. Love that river. Yeah. Headway. You shoot, you score. All right, get on the dirt bike. Let's see you yeah. guys. Uh. <laughs> uh. Anyways, let the adventure continue. Morning, everyone. James Top here on the James Top crew. We're going to be trying to get on our way to Castlegar this morning. We got a winter storm warning in effect, so we're going to get as far as we can before the weather closes in on us. So we're five kilometers shy of the Polson Summit and we are going to get there I think before we hit some weather and then we'll make an assessment about how far we're going to go after that. Either way I'll see you in Castlegar over the next couple of days. Have a good one. So uh, yeah everything's going uh, not too bad. Good good yeah because um, I saw that there is a snow warning ahead of you. Yeah, um, well, this is the thing, right? Like, we had just got in under the, I think, under the weather. Like, we got up the Paulson Pass, got down the other side, kind of got, you know, I, I was kind of spent after, well, me and, the, me and the fellows, right? So we called it at 27 kilometers today, or just 20 kilometers or so outside of Castle Guard. Yeah. And um, so far, the weather was really good, and I'm ex we're expecting, like, a, a foot overnight, so... Hello everyone, James Top here. We're uh, calling it a day. We're 27 kilometers from where we left off. We're about 20 kilometers away from Castlegar. We're gonna hit Castlegar tomorrow on the 15th of March. So the, this is where we're gonna take off from tomorrow on the 15th of March. We'll put a map pin in the description. And uh, good day today. Coming downhill has its own special pain now. But uh, we're on our way to Castlegar. We're gonna talk to some folks tomorrow at 6 p.m. at the Castle Theater. And thanks to Jode for bringing me a coffee from Common Grounds in Castlegar. See you tomorrow. Just a quick addendum to my previous video. It's my sister Valvet's birthday today and I just want to say to her, I love you. Thank you for everything you're doing on the Facebook scene. And have a good day. Have a happy birthday, Valvet. We're expecting like a foot overnight. So if we do get that um, over the next couple of days, we're going to stop drop. And by that, I mean, we won't be doing anything. We'll take a rest day. Yeah, for so sure. We're keeping an eye on that. Yeah, and that's that's one of the main reasons I wanted to contact you so we can plan ahead, because um, I was still thinking of coming out. You know, 
I was initially thinking Tuesday, but now I'm kind of trying to catch up on work, so thinking Wednesday. Sure. But with sure. the snow ahead of you, I'm just wondering what is the best plan? Well, you let know. me just have a quick look at the map here. I'm thinking um, either one of those days will work. Still on route on Highway 3. Yeah. But let me, let me put it this way. Um, <clears throat> tomorrow's going to be a short day. We're probably going to do about, you know, between 20 and 25. Get in the get in the castle gar like for real this time. Mm -hmm. You know, meet some meet some people, um, take a break, and then at six p.m. there's this function from six till eight in castle gar. Then the day after, we want to make our way to to Salmo. Morning, everyone. James Top here with James Top Crew. We are twenty kilometers or so outside of castle gar this morning. It's March the fifteenth at approximately eight oh nine. Or 0809 uh, army time we're going to make it a short one today because i got to talk to some folks in castle gar at the castle theater at 6 p.m and i need to rest up before i address a crowd of people so follow along with us on the gps live link it's not exactly uh the greatest weather for a crowd of people going down the highway but we're going to make it work and uh if you decide to pull over and say hi make sure you be careful see you on the road and that's right. That's where the map shows. The map shows like the storm warning is on the way to Selmo, just in that area. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So like, we'll. So I'm saying, like, we'll hopefully we'll get in under the weather tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If there is a delay, then it'll be a delay. As I understand it, it, it will be like a delay of a day. Okay. But while the snow gets cleared. Yeah. Yeah, so because like, I mean, you're you're prepared to march as long as you're not walking through deep snow, I would imagine, or any snow, you know, as long as the road's been yeah. plowed, right? Yeah, and we marched today, and you know, there was there was a bit of snow up in the pass, and then coming down, it was like super foggy. But we got the safety vehicle, we put lights on, we go on uh, into on into oncoming traffic. But I'm thinking Tuesday, like. If there's no weather holding you up, if you wanted to get here on Tuesday, you would be here for this thing at, uh, or I'm sorry, if you wanted to come on Wednesday, mm -hmm. we're still going to be on route between Castlegar and Salmo. Yeah. With the possibility that we're hunkered down waiting for the snow to get cleared. Because like, yeah, we're not going to, we're not going to be slogging through deep, deep snow though. Okay. Um, yeah, because if I left on Wednesday in morning, then I would see you in the late in the late afternoon, probably depending on the, the drive yeah. with the snow, and yeah. like you said, depending on the weather, whether you get to Selmo or not, the next day would be up for question, and um, and then from there you might be hunkered down depending on the weather. So it's kind of all up in the air. Yeah, but the terrain is such that. We're not. I doubt we're going to get to Salmo in one day. Yeah, yeah. It'll be. I mean, that's a long walk, anyways. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, there's quite. It's quite. Uh, the terrain is steep, so I don't see us getting to uh, Salmo in one day, anyway. What's the distance? What's the? I'm just looking at it right now from Castlegar like to. 40, I want to say forty-two. Salmo. Let me see. I'm looking at it right now. Salmo. Okay. I'm just. I'm just Oh, yeah, 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 42 kilometers. You're right on the dot. Yeah. Or go to Nelson and then so the go thing is, to Selmo. Coming out of Castlegar, there's a monumental um, incline. Mm -hmm. And then what's challenging, me in particular anyway, it's the, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the decline. Like going down the hills is killing me. Yeah, yeah, especially with those. I mean, for me, it's like the knees. It's hard to backwards. You have to walk yeah, backwards. Yeah, it's fucking brutal, man. It's brutal. So like those days... If I'm taking short days, those are the days I'm doing it. Because we go up one side and then down the other, and then call it 22, say, mm -hmm. you know, say 21, and then like, okay, we got accommodation set up for us in Salmo, and we just um, then we go back to where we left off, right? Okay, and then obviously once you do reach Salmo, then it's down south a little bit, and then along the way, my mom just said go to Nelson, but I'm like, that's way further, mom. That's way further. <laughs> that's way out of the way. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. She's just saying it's a little less of a crazy snowfall that way, but no, that's 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 double the distance, if not more. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, well, I I will keep in touch. And um, tomorrow was my prep day uh, in terms of prepping the unit and getting all my fuel and propane and all that stuff. And then I'll follow up with you on Wednesday morning. I'll text you and let you let you know if when I'm leaving or what's happening. Yeah, perfect, dude. And then. Yeah, look forward to having you back. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Um, all right, cool, dude. I'm also recording this for uh, just for an update. Is this okay if I throw this conversation online as well? 
Absolutely. All right, cool. Because everybody wants an update. We might have to bleep, have to bleep something out. <laughs> the enthusiasm is always fine, but okay. All right, cool, dude. Um, thanks for the update, and uh, looking forward to it. I'll see you here in a couple of days, hopefully. Okay, Marcel. All right, thanks a lot. Long time, a lot, James. Bye. Bye now. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. This is Marcel Ernie. It is March fourteenth, eight forty-three p.m. That is James Top. Missed the beginning of the conversation, um, but uh, you got the idea. He, it's, we got some serious snowstorms on the horizon, um, right on the map here. So yeah, you can see it right there. Arrow, well, boom. Yeah, in reverse. <laughs> My uniform on when I was in public, and I said what I said and did what I did. I experienced a night of sheer and utter terror. And I knew that there was something that I had to say and do in response to what was likely to come to me from, from the chain of command and the Canadian Armed Forces. Uh, it's against the code of service discipline for a member of the Armed Forces to appear in public unauthorized in uniform and make such statements that I did. However, I felt something needed to be done and I did. Recently, I wore the uniform of the Canadian Armed Forces, my uniform, and made several very public statements opposing overbearing government policy, knowing full well what I was saying and doing. I did and take full responsibility for my actions. I made it clear that I spoke for myself and not on behalf of the CAF. I did so because the uniform carries a certain weight and needed to be used to capture an amount of attention. It is a resource that I had at my disposal. I did not make the decision lightly. I believe with every fiber of my being in what I think is right and good in pursuing a form of constructive resistance, in bringing about real change and reform in the personal lives of people from all walks of life, regardless of their race, religion, or cultural background, in making an attempt to inspire others and to challenge themselves in both body and mind, I have obtained this inspiration from those that I have met and worked with throughout my career in the armed forces, the RCMP as a civilian public servant, and in my short time working as a tow truck driver. Let me say this, we as members of the federal government owe everything we have to the people of this country who work for a living. They drive trucks, they work on railways. They put up power and telephone lines, they build houses and roads. They work in stores, warehouses, and hospitals. They risk their lives every day. We, as members of the federal government, members of the Canadian Armed Forces, members of the Public Service Alliance of Canada, we work for you, not the other way around. I believe at the highest level, there is a willful blindness to this particular fact. There is a form of groupthink so severe in every single institution at almost all levels of government that has manifested as a form of collective schizophrenia. Middle managers play blinders on, remain deaf, and tiptoe around this fact as well. I believe this holds true of many organizations. There is an unflinching adherence to policy directives that are blatantly illogical, toxic, and harmful. Blindly following orders of public officials who refuse to admit that they are fallible human beings and that make mistakes who have demonstrated time and time again a lack of moral courage, who have been caught lying, cheating, and stealing, who make careers in uttering such inane and diametrically opposed statements such as staying together by standing apart, our mind become fractured and unable to function while attempting to process the content backtracking manipulation of words and numbers. It is a form of psychological abuse and coercion or in order to pressure people into accepting into their bodies an experimental and questionable product. We are adrift on an ocean of information, on a raft. We have elected a leadership that has taken upon itself to hold the only cup available and call it the holy vessel. They dip that cup into the ocean and call it the only approved source of water. Anyone who has the temerity to suggest that there is water all around us is castigated and shunned. It is stunning to behold. This is my response.
the higher authorities in our federal government, in my chain of command at the RCMP, in my chain of command at the Canadian Armed Forces. I will not blindly follow orders, ever. I will not bow down to high office or genuflect at the altar of medical science. I will not unthinkingly acquiesce to those with pedigree and credentials. I would pay respect to those that have earned it regardless of their race, color, or creed. If I am to be punished for what I have said and what I have done, then I accept that. While I lament what has happened to this country and the direction that our society is going, I would go to jail with my head up and look at myself in the mirror. I will rest easy in prison or leave this earth with peace of mind. They have no idea what I have been through. What we have been through. I have been angry, afraid, and alone. I have stared death in the face. I have prayed for it. And yet I have found a way to make peace with myself. They can punish me, they can hate me. They can shake their fists and wag their fingers at me. They can get red in the face and glare at me from over their masks. It matters little to me. They may take everything that I own, they are welcome to it. They can make their judgments and pass their sentence. I'm not religious, I'm not particularly spiritual. I do believe that there are other lives and other worlds than these. I feel deep in my heart and soul that I will go to a better one. So their condemnation is meaningless to me. I do not hate them. I thank them for what they have done to me. It has helped me find a sense of purpose that I never knew before. That I, as a member of the Canadian Armed Forces, will give up everything, up to including my health and my life, for my brothers and sisters in arms, for the weak working people of this country, because they have given me what I am, what I have, and they have made me what I am today. Thank you. Hello everyone, James Hop here. It's uh, apparently possible to get from the edge of Castlegar to Salmo in eight hours, uh, 36 kilometers by my clock, or odometer if you will. A uh, little bit of a hike going up over the Bonby Pass and uh, coming down the other side was a little bit easier. So it was a good day all in all, met a lot of interesting folks and we're gonna hang out in Salmo for this evening and possibly two evenings while we figure out whether or not uh, Kootenai Pass is going to be open. So uh, we'll play it by ear and see how things turn out. Good day today. Good job by everybody on the team. Hope to meet more people on the way and see you on the road. I am marching across the country. I started at the Terry Fox statue, the Terry Fox Memorial outside of BC Place in Vancouver. Currently we have uh, almost, uh, or a little bit over 600 kilometers on the odometer. The total distance is 4,293 kilometers. So uh, do the math please, because I'm uh, not a math magician. Uh, I intend to keep going. And uh, 
the only thing that's going to stop me is death or severe illness or a natural disaster. I have been doing this to protest the abuse of authority of the federal government. I am stepping forward to speak on behalf of those who have lost employment, have suffered mentally, physically, and financially due to government mandates. For those who have encountered hardship from relentless fear-based messages at the hands of public health authorities and a compromised media establishment. I am stepping forward to speak on behalf of those pressured into accepting medical procedures they would not otherwise have accepted under normal circumstances. Because they were threatened with job loss, loss of tenure, or their pensions. That's what I'm doing. Why? I have experienced and witnessed firsthand the effects of these corrosive policies. I see a divided population and divided families. I am seeing government that demands servitude instead of requesting service. I see truth that is censored, twisted, and misrepresented. I see justice smothered by layer upon layer of bureaucracy and incomprehensible legal language. I see a segment of the population that is afraid of its own government. I see Canadian citizens moving or preparing to move to leave the country or move to remote areas so that they can live free and unobstructed lives. I see people being silenced and jailed for trying to speak freely about government overreach. To say that I will not stand for this is inaccurate. The fact is I will stand against it with everything, with every fiber of my being. I will call upon my brothers and sisters in uniform, both serving and retired, from every profession, service, branch, and division to recognize what is happening to our country to look to my example and make their own decisions on what they think they can do to turn this ship around. Something that I've discovered recently is that this is not about me. This is about you. So I ask of you, look into yourselves, look into your minds, and your souls and ask yourselves why we believe in the principles of freedom. Ask yourself why it is important, not only to those of us living here and now, but to future generations. This must be firmly established in our own minds before we start trying to change other people's minds. We must believe what we come to believe, not because we are told to believe something. And we must truly believe and understand in what constitutes a free and democratic society. So bear with me while I wax poetic. <clears throat> I would like to ask how we recognize that you and I are individual universes unto ourselves. We are planetary bodies that attract and repel other bodies. We have our own gravity, atmosphere, and ecosystems that we undergo tectonic shifting and are capable of change. We may have to accept the fact that while we are not all alike, this does not mean that we should deny ourselves an existence that is capable of some sort of balance, despite our differences. We can strive to live in a system on a faith on a foundation of integrity, honesty, and respect. So how? How are we gonna get this done? How am I and how is the Canada Marching team gonna get this done? How are you gonna help us? This work has already been done by a number of people 
who have been working tirelessly over the last two years to establish collaborative networks. This is how we're going to get out of this thing. We already have works done by Maureen and Nadine, Darcy. I'm simply, I'm standing on, on the shoulders of giants that have come before me. So, having said that, we want to work towards a common purpose. The most immediate of which is reestablishing contact with our representatives at the federal government level because I believe that they do not understand that they work for you. We are not their subjects. They take their salaries out of your pockets and they must be reminded of that fact. And this is going to take some effort. Letters, petitions, meaningful dialogue, free from fear and with the aim of building trust in our institutions, rebuilding trust in our institutions. So when I say writing letters, emails, Posts on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, these things are not going to do it any longer. Printed letters, signed, delivered, hand-delivered in some cases, to your local MP offices. This is how you get their attention. And what are you going to say to them? I have an idea about that. I'm going to send an open letter to all members of parliament, from east to west, north to south. And I'm going to demand an audience with them when I get to Ottawa. They've got three and a half months to get their act together. And it's not just going to be me talking to them, it's going to be you talking to them through this mouth. Demonstrations are good, but they must have scope, goals, and an achievable end state. How else are we going to do this? Organization and communication in an atmosphere of integrity and trust that does not engender further conflict. So in closing, <clears throat> this is what I believe. I believe this can be done. And I speak not just to you, I speak to myself when I say this. There will be a, quite a requirement for us to learn patience and perseverance. I ask of you to learn to listen to each other I will learn to listen as well. Listen to what we're saying, put our phones down, have a conversation. And we can use humor to our advantage. It does work. Humor is on our side in this, as well as the truth. We can build on our ideas, and then we can make our decisions. <coughs> together. So the will of the individual to rise from the mindset of helplessness is all it takes. The power of our freedom is manifest in the decisions we make. To realize the breadth and depth of our inner resources and taking action is the first step to reclaiming the freedom that we have already been given. So, as we used to say back in the day, when giving a long message over the radio, give people a chance to take a break, drink some water, and what we used to say in closing is more to follow. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> there's, there's, uh, uh, I'll just uh, say a couple more things and we'll, we'll take a break and I uh, believe Maureen said uh, we'll take uh, anybody has uh, any questions. You can ask me any questions, but we just, uh, I just want to say that um, I'll just, I'll just leave it at, thank you.